Hey guys, how's it going? So right now I'll be talking about the RG G16. This is the 2024 model and it's newly designed for 2024. So let's take a look at it. So this is a gorgeous looking laptop. This is unlike anything I've ever seen in a gaming laptop before. So let's just take a look at that. So first of all, we're getting all aluminum. This is made from a single block of CNC milled aluminum, similar to what you'll get from the MacBook or the razor blades. So the same aluminum on the front, at the back, and on the keyboard deck. So the, the reason why I'm mentioning that is previous RG designs and also all their gaming laptops, they, they're made of different materials throughout. Like the lid might be different from the back and even the back might have certain elements that are a different material and even the keyboard deck might sometimes be different. The cool thing about this is this is all one piece of metal. So it just feels a lot more cohesive and just more of a complete premium package. And there's little to no flex on this aluminum. It's really hard, rigid, thick aluminum, not as thick as the Razor Blade 16 or the MacBook, I must say, but still one of the best. And on the front of the laptop, there's the laser etched logo in the corner and man, it looks really cool too. It just really makes it look more premium. And if you did get the white version, this is how that one looks. So this is more of the natural exposed metal while this has a darker anodized coating on it. It's definitely personal preference, but for me, I much prefer the silver color versus the darker. There have been some people talking about fingerprints, yet yeah, it's there, but it's not nearly as bad as some other laptops I've used in the past. Really, really good design. So just flipping it over to the back. So this back ventilation is for speakers. And then there's a lot of intakes here because this thin laptop is pushing a lot of power. So now let's open it up and take a look at the keyboard deck. It opens one handed easily to really nice tension. As you can see, there is a little bit of a wobble when you open and close it. Um, not the end of the world, unless you're doing this all day, you're not, you're not gonna notice it. And a lot of people have asked me if it wobbles while you're typing. It doesn't wobble. It looks like it on camera here because this table isn't very secure and the, the laptop isn't laying flat. Um, but from my perspective, I'm not able to see any wobble while I'm typing. And speaking of typing, let's just talk about that really quickly. This is probably one of the best thin and light keyboards I've ever used. It's pretty much identical to the keyboard I use on the G14, if you did see that video. So as I said about that keyboard, it has just the right amount of actuation force to where it feels premium. It has a nice spring back up and the travel distance for being such a thin and light laptop is really good too. This is much better than the MacBook Pro's keyboard, the Razer's keyboard, any of the previous G16s or M16s or G14s I've had in the past. The keycaps seem larger too, and they're just easier to type on, much, much better. Um, definitely a big improvement over last year. And this trackpad is gigantic too, and it is incredible to use. I think this is the best trackpad I've ever used on any Windows laptop. Um, it's just way more precise than what I've used before, and that includes the Razer Blade 16 too. Asus did an excellent job on this trackpad. and. I know some people might be asking for a numpad on the trackpad, but from all the ones that I've used in the past, for whatever reason, those trackpads were just not as responsive. I know it's really cool to have a capacitive numpad, but like I said, th there was always some kind of compromise with every Asus laptop I've used that had that. I actually prefer that it's not here and I can just get an external numpad if I needed to. And the speaker grills are still integrated into the overall keyboard deck and the chassis, but just this indentation here, I just kind of wish it was a little bit more flush, but honestly, this laptop is almost perfect in every way design-wise, so I guess I just have to nitpick where I can. So next, let's talk about the display. This is pretty much the same display that I got in the Razer Blade 16, if you did see that video. So it's a QHD 2560 by 1600 resolution, it's 240 hertz and it supports G-Sync. And it's a great laptop to game on. Measurements, like I said, are identical to what I got on that Razer. So under 420 nits, really high color gamut, among the best I've ever seen. And because it's OLED, you're getting those inky blacks and you're able to get the perfect micro contrast. And after using this laptop and then going back to my 
Titan 18, which has a mini LED display and one of the better ones out there, I'm starting to prefer OLED. The only issue I'm really having though is I wish it was a little bit brighter. Under 420 nits just isn't bright enough to take outdoors and bright sunlight. Not that much people, not, not that people do that much, but in case you do, I think you will hit some limitations when it comes to that. But what I do appreciate is this display, unlike the Razer, has some kind of anti-reflective coating on it and it does a really good job. So I'm shining these bright lights on it and it's doing a good job of rejecting it. That wasn't the case on the Razer Blade 16. That was like a mirror effect. And especially if you took that outside, forget it. You won't be able to use it. It seems like they're using something very similar to what Samsung uses on their S24 Ultra series. It's not matte, it's still glossy. And I'm not able to see any decrease in contrast or any decrease in visual fidelity versus that Razer Blade 16 that I had before. So I think you're getting the best of both worlds with this screen. Playing with OLED with that ultra fast response time and G-Sync is kind of unreal. If you've never experienced that before in any monitor or any gaming laptops and you are considering this, I think that's one of the first things you're gonna notice is how buttery smooth everything looks at 240 Hertz with G-Sync. So I know I touched on the speaker grill, but let me just talk about these speakers for a little bit. They sound absolutely fantastic. Probably the best speakers I've ever heard on a Windows gaming laptop. The best I've heard before was in the Razer Blade 18. Unfortunately, I don't have that laptop with me anymore to compare them side by side. But if I had to guess, I think this pulls ahead a little bit. I was playing around a Call of Duty on this multiplayer and I was able to hear footsteps in front of me, behind me, Dolby Atmos with their surround sound wizardry on these six speakers is just incredible. Um, the sound stage is insanely wide. And even when I was playing some single player games, like I'm still playing through Horizon Zero Dawn, someday I'll finally finish it. And again, the overall effect that these speakers bring to life, there's nothing else out there like it, not even close. With the G16, I don't even think you need to invest in a gaming headset. This is more than good enough for you for any type of gaming or any type of movie watching you may wanna do with this laptop. Okay, but before we talk about performance, I wanna talk about the new Intel Core Ultra series. So this is a brand new architecture for Intel. It's completely different from their previous 1300 series and this year's 1400 series. It's a brand new architecture. It's made on a tile system instead. So they're not even calling this Intel 15th generation or 14.5 generation. They're calling this the Intel Core Ultra Series 1. So Intel's pretty much turning a brand new page and there's some key attributes to this chip. So first of all is the efficiency. The Intel Core i9 chips, the 14900 and the 13980, they need like 30 watts to run Windows properly. And if you're just idle, you're sitting at 15 watts. So just take a look at what's going on here. This is just a resource monitor that Asus has built into the Armory Crate. And as you can see on the CPU, in general, I'm running at under five watts. This is just a computer in idle. And then when I start to use it, it'll go up to like eight watts, maybe up to 10, 15 watts, just using regular mundane tasks like browsing the web and stuff. So because of that, you're able to get proper efficiency out of this laptop. I'm, I'm able to get like nine hours of battery life just doing regular, normal, tasks because of this new architecture you're able to get up to 70 percent of reduced efficiency and reduced power consumption and because of that you get reduced heat and that plays a role into the performance so let's just get right into that so let's just start off with everyone's favorite benchmark time spy this is kind of why i wanted to preface the intel core ultra series of chips before i showed the benchmarks because I guess because of because it is a new architecture and given how thin this laptop is, in terms of performance, you're getting performance of premium gaming laptops from back in 2022, at least when it comes to the CPU. So in, in Time Spy, at least just on the CPU side, I'm getting very similar results to what I got in the 12800 series of laptops. So that immediately could be a deal breaker for you. It could not be. But wait till I actually get into some real games. You'll see how much of a difference that actually makes. In terms of the GPU, I'm actually getting a little bit more performance than I did from the RTX 4070 
and the Legion 7. This is only utilizing 105 watts of TGP on this 4070. And I think one reason why this starts to pull ahead is again, because the CPU is so efficient, Dynamic Boost is able to apply more power to the GPU since the CPU doesn't need it. And as I get into real games, that starts to really show. So one of the new games I started testing was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So instead of just doing the regular 1080p, 4240p and 4K that would typically do, I wanted to show what the average FPS is, the lower fifths and the lower firsts. Um, I think this might paint a better picture for competitive style shooters, and I'm also testing it in QHD. I feel like that's just more of the sweet spot in 2024 for competitive type shooters. Unlike maybe if this was like a few years ago, we would still be running these in 1080p. So let me guys know what you think about how I'm presenting this data here. Um, or I could change it around or anything like that. So on the G16 2024 model, we're getting an average of 70 FPS. And that's, what, that's on QHD with the extreme settings preset without any upscaling. So another re another thing I'm trying to consider is how should I how do I want to present this data? Um, should I be using DLSS? The reason why I decided not to was in case I test any Intel only chips or only or any AMD only chips. I want to be able to compare apples to apples, but I will say though when I turn on DLSS performance with ultimate settings, I was getting like 150 FPS, which is more than enough for me in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So I can change how I display, I can change how I display this. I kind of feel like I do want to turn on DLSS because most people will be using that or they'll be using FSR or Intel's version. So let me know in the comments. I can change how I do this by the time I do the full review of the G16. So next I want to go over to Cyberpunk and on this is I started retesting this game again. So I'm using Cyber, I'm, I'm using the psycho settings with the LSS quality. So this is the absolute max settings that you could get out of Cyberpunk. And there's no gaming laptop that could really run this game properly unless you're running in 1080p or if you're using frame generation. So as you can see, if you wanted to max out Cyberpunk on this 4070, G16, you have to run it in 1080p. At 1440p, it becomes unplayable and I'd even bother testing it in 4K. You can turn on frame generation if you wanted to to increase the frames, but I didn't get a chance to test that in this game. So, so but Cyberpunk is by far the most demanding game out there right now. Not every game is like this. So Dying Light 2, another new game I started testing. And even by today's standards, this game is still really pretty and very visually appealing. So the fact that even at 4K, you're able to run this game at 46 FPS is quite stunning at how thin and light this laptop is. And a game like this, 46 FPS is more than good enough. And, I, and again, I'm running this on the maximum settings you could possibly run it at. Now let's look at Horizon Zero Dawn. And at 1080p, that's when the CPU starts to become a bit of a bottleneck. So at 1080p, you're pretty much getting similar scores to what we got from a gaming laptop from like two years ago. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But when you step up to QHD, it starts to perform as good as the 4070 in the Legion 7 that I had last year. And at 4K, same thing. So. That's another thing about this. So even though the CPU isn't as powerful, when, for, mo for the most part, once you're running games in QHD or higher, you're not gonna really be experiencing the bottleneck of this lower performing CPU. And then the good thing about that is in regular non-gaming tasks, you're getting all the benefits of this new CPU. So I don't have any problems with, with using this. So that's the thing. So overall, if you were worried about this laptop only being limited to 105 watts TGP, on the GPU, don't be. In fact, it's actually better this way because you're getting, because you're able to get a thinner, lighter package and it performs just as well. And then just let's just take a look at Cinebench R24 as well. And if you wanna just, so I, I compare that against the MacBooks that I've had before and some of the other laptops I've had before. So when you start to compare this new um, Intel Core Ultra 9, it does start to fall behind the devices like the MacBook. And when it comes to creative tasks, that's when the Core Ultra 9 does kind of slow down a little bit. And that's one reason why it would be hard for me to switch over to something like this as much as I love this laptop. 
And another reason why, too, is the RAM. It sucks that even at the 4090 level, you're still limited to 32 gigabytes of RAM. For these videos, and now that I have two cameras and I'm starting to use more effects and stuff, I, I really like having at least 64 gigabytes of RAM to do my work. And honestly, if I could get a 4090 with 64 gigabytes of RAM, I might consider switching out of my gigantic Titan AT and into something like this, but just because this is just so much portable and lighter, I can actually do serious work while being on battery life, something that MacBook users um, tend to enjoy with this laptop. But I think Asus really dropped the ball by not having a higher RAM version of this laptop. I understand because of how thin this is, it's a brand new design that the RAM is soldered on. I get, I can get behind that. I mean, a lot of other laptops in their first generation did have that and eventually as the years went on, they started adding removable RAM slots. So, but I do wish there was just a higher RAM version of this. I would really consider this as my main laptop if I can get 64 gigabytes of RAM. So for me, that's a little bit unfortunate. If you're just like a regular gamer or you're a student or you just want a premium laptop that you can occasionally game on, like I would recommend this 4070 over the 4080. You get to save $600. This one is a little bit thinner and lighter because there's no vapor chamber. And as you were able to see, except for Cyberpunk, you're able to run every single game comfortably. Maybe next year, if the Intel Core Ultra Series 2 can improve on the performance a good amount, and if they can offer a 4K screen, and if they can give me 64 gigabytes of RAM, just because of the particular niche I'm in with making these videos and stuff, I would switch to this in a heartbeat. This would be my daily laptop. And I would, I probably wouldn't even want to review any laptops next year if that was the case. So, yep. Yeah, so let me know what you guys want to see in the full review. Leave some comments down below and I'll make sure I, I, and I'll make sure I tackle them. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.